Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at master clips, source clips, clip instances, and subclips, and why copying stuff from your card to your computer is important. Okay, let's talk about clips. How to safeguard your clips so they're not missing. And, and the first one, which seemed obvious to me, but not to a lot of folks, is you need to move stuff from this card. And if it's an SD card or a micro SD or whatever your camera uses to record, don't leave the stuff on there. Import it. I've got a, um, a tutorial on importing. So the first thing we're going to do is move the stuff to the computer. This is the card. This is my computer. I'm going to drag this clip over here and copy it into the computer. Now, I don't care if I unmount the card, take it out, lose the card, format the card. I have my stuff on my computer. You should back it up in at least another place. But this is the first and most important thing. Back up your clip, move your clip, and now you're dealing with it on your computer. Okay. Now, that's just a file on the computer. Let's import this into Premiere Pro and see what we get. To import this, I'm going to go to the media browser. And look for my clip. There's my clip right there. In the media browser, I'm browsing the clip. It's not imported yet. Although it's inside, it looks like it's in Premiere Pro, it's not in the program yet. If you double click on this, it will load this into the source monitor. And again, this looks like it's in Premiere Pro. It's not. It's just in the source monitor in the media browser. If you go to the project panel, you'll see we don't have any clips. I have my sequence, which I created over here, but I don't have any media in there. The best thing to do is to right click and choose import. But I also want to show you that you can drag from the media browser directly into the timeline. If you go back to the project panel, you'll see that it is loaded in there. This is a source clip, also called a master clip. Here's the next thing that is important to understand is this is a link to the clip that I brought in. You want to know how you can find that out? right click on it and choose reveal in explorer or reveal in finder on the mac and when i do that there it is that's the clip it's linked this is my local computer this is premiere pro if i delete this here then the next time i load this project premiere pro will say the clip is missing you can't throw away these clips they're not inside premiere pro they're links so if you were editing with all of your clips on your card and then you pull the card out of your computer and Premiere Pro says, where's the clips? They're over here. So that's why you got to move the stuff over and then we have it in there. So this is a source clip or a master clip. You can have multiple versions of the source or master clip. Let's show you how that works. So if I import this clip again, it shows up as another clip. It's the same name and the same clip. This one here, I added to the timeline from this version. So if I go back to the first one and delete it, Premiere Pro is telling me that I've got a sequence where this is needed. Are you sure you want to continue? Click yes. It's gone from my sequence, although it's over here. Premiere Pro allows a workflow to have multiple source or master clips in the timeline. Some people, this is essential to the workflow. I never do this. But in some people's workflow, they actually have multiple versions of the exact same clip in different sequences for whatever reason. That's the way they work, okay? So that's important to understand. Again, this is a, a, a duplicate of the other clip. I can also right click and choose duplicate and it's going to make a duplicate. This way it actually adds copy to the name. I'm just gonna delete that out of there. Okay, so that's a source clip and a master clip pointing to a linked asset on your computer because it's not on the card anymore. All right, let's talk about clip instances. So if I'm working on this clip and I wanna create some versions of this, 
I can hit the in and out point here and drag that down into my timeline. That is a clip instance. It doesn't show up on the left hand side. You can also have clip instances by taking the whole source clip in here and cutting this up. So if I'm cutting this up with, a, with the razor blade and chopping this up and editing this, it's the exact same thing. Let's get rid of my gaps. So now I've got three clip instances from one master source clip. They don't show up on the left hand side. If I delete this clip, it's going to delete all of the instances. So the instances are directly connected to the source uh, clip. All right, let me undo that and bring that back. So let's talk about subclips. So right now these are instances. If I hold the control key on Windows, command on Mac and drag it over to here, then I'm gonna be creating a subclip and I can name it anything I want and I've got a tutorial on creating subclips. So let's talk about subclips. I'm just gonna do this for all three. I wanna show you another way to create a subclip. If I double click on this clip here, it loads into the source monitor. I can command or control drag that down over here. It's the same thing. So the difference between clip instances and subclips Clip instances, which are in the timeline, don't show up over in the project panel, but subclips do show up in the project panel. This is really, really useful when you've got a long clip. Uh, so if you've shot something where you have 90 minutes of one single clip, you can go through and systematically make a whole bunch of subclips. You can put those in bins, in folders, and name them and organize them any way you want. I know lots of people who work with subclips. Now let's look at one thing. Remember I told you before with clip instances, if I delete this source clip or master clip, it's going to delete all the instances. Well, let's delete these instances and instead let's drop in our sub clips. I'm gonna select the master clip, this is the source, and delete that and notice the sub clips stay here and the edit stays here. That's pretty cool. I don't know if, if I trust that. I mean, that's an efficient way to work because I throw away the master clip and I've got my sub clips. I don't know. It, Premiere Pro will keep the sub clips and it will keep um, your edit of the sub clips all intact. But what if you accidentally had a couple of, you, like your main edit was sub clips, but then some B-roll was an instance and it was part of another clip. It's, it would be easy to delete some things. Let's go find these clips on the computer. So on the left hand side, I'll right click on the sub click, clip and choose reveal and explore or finder. And it's going to find that same single master clip that I moved over. Okay, so you don't have to use all of these methods. You do have to import at least you know, your main master uh, clip, your, your source clip and work with that, but you don't have to work with sub clips. I wanted to really just let people understand all the different ways that Premiere Pro works with something called a clip um, and to stop people from editing while the stuff is on their card. Don't do that. I, mean, I think you do that once and then you realize um, what a mistake that is. So back up, back up, back up, back up. You can't uh, back up enough in this world. So make sure you've got lots of backups. Whew. Okay. You all right now? Sub clips, clip instances, source clip, master clips. Great. If you found this informative and you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And we now have a new PayPal donation directly on the front of the Video Revealed YouTube channel. Thanks to everyone who supports us, everyone that, that keeps me on my toes and comments. And uh, uh, we really appreciate all the, the uh, help and the community that we're building here. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you looking your best.